Hey guys, welcome back to Musings of Mavery. I'm your host, Mavery, and today we're going to be looking at Tensura episode 17. So, last episode we basically got the introduction of more demon lords, and especially one particular demon lord, Milam, who is now the ally and bestie of our dearest Rimuru. So, Definitely, I saw a lot of the comments by uh, you guys, and maybe I was a little bit too hasty in making judgment on Milam. I was, def I was definitely a bit fooled by her personality and demeanor, but apparently she may be a little bit more than what is on the surface. So I'm very curious to see if we'll get a little bit more of that within this episode, because it seems that she's a pretty interesting character on her own. And besides that, we also need to probably, we're going to go directly into the dynamics of the alliance with Milam. Uh, it was mentioned in the last episode at the very end how this is going to shift the power balance between the demon lords. And my prediction was that this is going to turn into a demon lord turf war, basically, so that the other demon lords can have some sort of, uh, some sort of causes belly to basically take down Milam if any of them were jealous or envious of her powers and her domain. Also, I think another part that should be, uh, shouldn't be looked over is the fact that Rimuru is now a ally of a demon lord, and at least typically demon lords are portrayed as evil, right? So I'm definitely curious to see how the other human kingdoms are going to react to this as well, if they are going to react in you. I've been waiting for a human to pop up for a long time now. I feel like ever since Rimuru defeated uh, defeated the Orc Disaster, you know, the Dwarf... I'm mean, sorry, not Dwarf Disaster, the Orc Disaster. I The Dwarves have came and they decided to make an alliance. I was expecting some human envoys, human couriers as well, so... Maybe we can see that in this episode. In any case, let's find out together and go into the episode. So let's begin in three, two, one, play. And here we go, the human kingdoms. I believe this one is sort of like a trade republic. So that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> so are we going back in time a little bit? All right, let me skip this opening and I'll see you guys in just a second. And we are back. We got him. Oh, it's Mila. Really? A schoolgirl uniform? All right. <laughs> oh, nice. They even have video calls. Oh, it's a full potion. Really? Oh, 
Well, that was fast. Weren't you just here for like, I don't know, a few days? Oh, nice. Oh, so that is going to be the source of funds? Oh, okay. So they're going to be a manufacturing nation? I actually thought that uh, this federation would focus on getting the raw materials and stuff. Okay, what happened here? Oh. <laughs> You're a zombie now? <laughs> and how did you get hurt? And who are you guys? Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, that was nice. You know what? Let me clap for you for this. Yes. Oh, come on. Be right her later. She did a good thing here. Oh, 
Come on, you guys have to be completely stupid if you can't realize that someone who's able to speak with Milim on the same level isn't someone you can mess with. Oh. <laughs> and now your besties. <laughs> Come on, bribing her? Is she actually scheming or is she some... Hmm. Alright, never mind. The Kingdom of Falmouth. Okay. What is this? Oh, this is the... Hmm. 
Oh. Come on, we want to see God to fight. Okay, so they're basically crabs. Alright. <laughs> and this is Milum? <laughs> And how you prove that? What? Is this guy actually also going to be a major character as well?
中で自分たちが死んだことにしましょう。それで完全な人間になり遂げるためです。うん。Really? Alright. That was a fast change of allegiance. Okay, I'm guessing maybe this anime skips some part as well. Alright. Moderate Harlequin Alliance. Don't tell me this is going to be a Harley Quinn character. Oh, yeah, it is. Charbidus? What is that? A dragon? <laughs> Alright. I think that's about it. So I'll see you guys after the ending. Alrighty, that was episode 17 of Tensura. Now, this is one of those episodes where a lot happens, but at the same time, Nothing really happened, if that makes sense. So, knowledge-wise, we're not in any better position than we were in last week, even though, as I said, lots of things did happen. And I'll talk through the things that uh, did have some kind of impact. Now, before that, I just want to briefly mention uh, about the potions, which Vesta apparently successfully researched, right? So, they were talking about how they should enter a cooperation with the Dwarven Kingdom where they provide the raw materials and then Rimuru's, country, Rimuru's nation processes these and then sells them back. Now, it's a little bit of a nitpick here, but I don't, I don't think this really makes a lot of sense. Uh, because if... Unless, unless there's a reason that, for instance, diluting a 99%... Uh, a 99% potion is better than diluting a 98% potion, uh, there's no reason why they would need to switch now. Uh, I mean, is it really going to, if, especially if you factor in the transportation costs and whatnot, is it really going to make a difference uh, with moving the processing to another country? And especially since, in terms of potions, 
I don't think this this anime is going to go that far or that deep in regards to these kinds of trading matters, but potions do kind of seem to be a sort of military commodity, if you will, a military consumable in a sense, right? Uh, so definitely this kind of strategic resources, I don't think it's a good idea to move your production facilities to another nation. What would make a little bit more sense would be for uh, Rumuru uh, within the Jura Federation to, you know, gather all the resources and then make these kinds of 99% potions, sell them out, export them out to other nations, and then the other nations can, for instance, if it was in the Dwarven, sold to the Dwarven Kingdom, they could then use these 99% potions, dilute them themselves, themselves, and then sell to others again a sort of like a freeway trade i think that would make a little bit more sense than what was proposed in this episode but again i don't think this this anime or this series is going to be that kind of in-depth nation building trading uh series so just a little quick note there so moving on the demon lords uh, so apparently it turns out from this episode that Gilmud was, or Guild, was the result of all demon lords coming together to, in Milam's word, pass time because they were bored. Uh, I definitely think it's not that. I'm still going with the theory that these demon lords are trying to expand in some way. And probably by trying to get this new demon lord within the Jura Forest, I'm thinking maybe it was a way to circumvent the non-aggression pact that they had with Veldora in regards to the forest. So them actually having an, another puppet demon lord that can be set up could help them uh, move forward into the Jura Forest and then eventually forward to other areas as well in order to expand their domains. Uh, that is still my theory right now for that. Um, in terms of Milam, uh, I we still don't really get a, any better read on her uh, within this episode as in last episode that we don't already know from last episode. She still seems a little bit easily manipulated, right? I'm still not quite sure if that's all an act or maybe she's selectively cunning and smart on some things, but meh on others, right? Like, yeah... Yeah, I we still we still need to learn a little bit more in regards to Milam or the other demon lords in order to give a definitive statement. So that's there. And the third part, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, the humans are starting to take notice. It took them long enough, right? Um, so both Blumund and Film have sent representatives here to figure out what was going on, and it makes sense because these two nations are closest in border to Jura Forest. Uh, definitely, again, not much can be said here, right? I, I think this is a proper response. Of course, they don't want to know uh, who, who is this new nation, who, who are these people setting up a new uh, stronghold, if you will, in the Jura Forest, are they friend, are they foe, especially in terms of uh, border relations, right? Now, as for trade, not quite sure there, because the only reason why anybody would want to go for the Jura Forest to trade is if they're going to trade east to west, which is from the Eastern Empire to the Western Kingdoms, such as Blue Month, such as Belmoth, Belmoth, and all the other Western Kingdoms. I'm assuming right now that probably humans aren't trading with demon lords. Uh, maybe they are, but... I'd be surprised if they are, right? So in this sense, uh, having this kind of strategic location only makes sense if there is actually active trade between the empires, between the east and the west. And so that means that right now what I'm really missing is for a representative from the east to come along. Uh, we still don't know anything about them yet. And what is their relation with all the other human countries, uh, human kingdoms in, on the rest of the map? Right. Otherwise, I feel like this is a very simple, yeah, let's just make sure that this, uh, this place we have a border with isn't going to, these monsters aren't going to invade us anytime soon, and make sure that they can also serve as a sort of early warning system should the Eastern Empire invade. 
which again I seem to recall was one of the worries of I believe one of the Belmond representatives and that was like far away in in episode one two three sometime over there so again that part uh, still need a little bit more info especially in regards to the Empire now as for Rumoru's great plan of you know build, building up another champion so that they so that he can basically make himself as an ally of humans I'm not really quite sure if that logic checks out because uh, you know if I think again it's more of a simple fact of our is this is Rumuru a threat and are they trustworthy people to sign a treaty with now maybe this you know this friend of a champion can help but at the same time as long as one alliance can pass i'm sure the other alliances or at least non-aggression packs can also go through with relative relative ease right uh, especially in Bel Blue Moon's case, since they already know of this whole situation, they will probably, in the end, sign this alliance with Rumoru anyways. So that in, uh, in itself should be enough reference. They don't need really need to go through this whole other story of building up this champion in Yum, right? Uh, especially if you run the risk of being exposed later on. But again, maybe this is just part of the story and I'm nitpicking, I just feel like it kind of seemed unnecessary. And speaking of Yom, uh, this also seems to be an episode that skips a lot of other developments. I can, I can accept that they skipped the developments of the, you know, of Vesta, of Giru and whatnot. But this one seemed, especially since we, this is the first time we've seen Yom, we don't really really even know anything about him yet. He doesn't really know anything about Rumru yet. And now suddenly they are entering into a you know, a, a top down relationship. That seems kind of weird. What I can see from this episode is judging by the backstory, maybe Yuum is, you know, having some trouble with the law or something. Uh and so they're trying to escape. Maybe uh, the original kingdom they came from isn't really a good kingdom, something like that, and so they decide to settle here. Maybe, maybe. Well, I do hope that we can get a little bit more backstory in regards to him as well. Uh, otherwise, he does seem like a nice guy from the few seconds that we can see of him. Seems like he cares for his men, is brave, you know, all that good stuff, yada yada. So probably, yeah, not going to be a bad guy. Although, I am kind of curious why he kept on passing glances to his men at the back when they were talking together. I thought that that had some other significance, maybe they were plotting something, but now it doesn't seem so. So yeah, that was the humans. And I guess on a final note, this Kari Budisu, Kari, Kari Budisu dude or monster, I'm assuming it's one of the monsters that we see in the opening. Again, not really sure what to make out of all this. Apparently, it's on power with a demon lord, and apparently a demon lord's power is still, as mentioned last episode, much higher than Rumuru's. So that's why none of them are really that concerned with Rumuru yet, because to them, he's just another fly on the wall. Well, maybe not fly. Maybe maybe he's a lizard right now, okay? Not, not quite a fly. A little bit higher. But still nothing to really uh, view as a threat yet. Um, since we don't know anything about this yet, I'm just gonna make it, I'm just gonna call it right here. I believe that, uh, Rumuru, for the finale of this episode, is going to take care of this Karibudisu monster thing of magic, maybe consume this dude or this monster or whatever, and that would get grant Rumuru equal power of a demon lord, and so then Rumuru will become one of the demon lords. That's my prediction for now. This is entirely going out on a limb. Nothing really to base this on except for how normally um, anime seasons like to go and they like to end on a high note. So maybe it'll be like that. But as again, like I said, there's not really much info that I can gather this episode that is really going to make a difference in terms of how we view things. So it's overall just a driving the plot along episode. Nothing too spectacular here. But if I did miss something, 
let me know. Maybe there's something significant um, in terms of development here, although I don't really see it. So, I guess that was that. I Nothing much more to mention about this episode. I did like how Milam punched that, you know, I'm not going to remember his name, that subordinate of the Beastman, uh, Carrion, Demon Lord. No, that was a nice animation. I was kind of bummed that we didn't get to see Gobta uh, show off his skill when fighting that big spider crabby thing. But, again, maybe plenty of other uh, opportunities in the future. Otherwise, I think that's about it. Uh, so, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.